Welcome to Battletech in the Morning with Captain Nips. I'm Captain Nips, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another week, which means it's time once again, one more time, to indulge in that tradition of throwing out the rule book and basking in the silliness that is numbers tweaked to levels that really are just kind of irresponsible. So in today's Battletech in the Morning, it occurred to me that there was there there has been an omission amongst my various Friday goings on. I've hit things with artillery that was entirely overpowered. I've fired lasers from what amounts to orbit, but I haven't given you explosions. So as in the words of the great Torg, I have one question and one question only. Explosions? And for that, I bring you the Griffin Superman one more time. And when I want to bring explosions, I mean, any sorts of missiles will do. But only if you bring enough of them. So I think an LRM 200 should probably suffice. As per usual, our targets, the Atlas Lance, lined up and ready to receive the gift that will keep on giving missile after missile as we engage in what can only be described as saturation bombing. Now, it wouldn't be entirely fair if I didn't give the Atlases at least a chance to respond. And they'll get a chance to respond as uh, the Superman Griffin makes its first entirely too fast move straight up into the gullet. Right onto that hill. Right there. Beautiful lines of sight. We've got targets in the distance. A couple of them are even bulwarked. Lucky them. We aren't going to shoot at them. So let's line this, let's line this shot up and see what happens. Giving them everything I've got. And the hits just keep on coming. Interestingly enough, not killing the mech outright, nor killing it by headshots, or by the pilot dying to impacts, that was 200 LRMs. At 95% chance to hit, there were some misses in there. And of course the the, the Alices are gonna, gonna have a chance at this here. Who knows? Maybe this is even the day where the Atlases come out on top. Because I didn't tweak the uh, range values of the LRM twenties. In fact, anything I did to the LRM twenties, I was giving to the Alices because they're equipped with LRM twenties. So this is gonna be just all of the explosions everywhere here today. Barely hit. But Apex seems confident. Aye, aye. Now you probably have noticed that uh, neither I nor the Atlases immediately burst into flames upon firing any of these LRMs. And, well, that's of course because we've turned all the heat off on the LRMs. Let's see, I believe this was target number one. So let's continue our saturation bombing here. Targeting for an alpha strike. Ah, it feels like a bad day in MechWarrior Online here. The bees just never stop. And eventually, the targets fall down. Now, aside from the uh, complete impossibility of a something the size of a griffin carrying 10 LRMs, that doesn't even speak to the amount of ammunition being stashed away inside this mech. Which, in and of itself, probably, if stacked up physically, would be as tall as a skyscraper. Standing by. 
Shall we continue? I think we shall. Only 80% to hit, which is a little low, truth be told. But I think when we're throwing this many missiles... Maybe not a huge problem. Paltry attempts of the atlases to try and match, match salvos. Interestingly, the atlases aren't advancing to try and use some of the rest of their weaponry, and and that's honestly that's fine by me. I I will be perfectly happy not to get hit by a bunch of auto cannon rounds as well. But let's uh let's shake things up a bit. Let's let's get a different position, shall we? Let's see, where can we go? Where's a nice where's a nice tight place to uh to engage in missile mayhem? Yeah, this this is this seems good. We'll just jump over here. And continue the work that we started on this atlas over here. Because it's probably worth looking to see what does it look like when you get real, real close and let the bees fly. Well, I don't have to worry about the auto cannon on uh, that guy. And lo and behold, we caused the knockdown. Go figure. Not that it'll matter because it'll stand right back up. We're launching so many missiles that the number dialog pop-ups for damage can't keep up. That's when you know you have thrown enough missiles, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and the strategic sensor lock. Trying to make it easier for his fellow Atlases to rain down. But Apex in her nigh-impervious griffin will not be deterred. And now it's time to find out what happens when you stand point-blank with no minimum range. Oh, by the way, I, you know, remove the minimum range on this thing. And, uh, try to track the target from five meters away. We hit that atlas so hard, I'm pretty sure the factory felt it. Oh, but someone has decided to become salty. Which is a worthwhile endeavor if I were not nigh invincible. I mean, honestly, the last desperate act of... Taking heavy hits, Commander. The about to be deceased does seem like crashing into the opponent for what can only be said is a last gasp. Now, let's not get too far away. We want, we want the camera to be nice and close for some of this. But we don't want it to be quite so point blank, I think. This is close. We like this, right? Firing a full salvo. Now, as it stands that I am firing 200 missiles a turn, I do have to watch my ammo counts. I think I've only got a little over six more salvos left. That should be enough, right? Oh, as the, as the short range stuff comes out to play and the atlases start to show that they too can engage in the noble art of explosions. Trying their best. Credit where credit is due. Reporting heavy damage. Yes, Commander. Let's carry on. Oh, let's say from up here. This seems like a nice perch. Lifting off. And that seems like a reasonable target. From the left side, though, this is going to be very unpleasant for this atlas. 
Firing all weapons. Look at all those missiles. Oh, ammo explosion certainly not helping that Atlas's cause as when the smoke clears all that's left is numbers and scrap. On the plus side, the AI now figured out it has focus. And it's trying real hard. It's putting up a really good fight. Credit to the AI. It's trying. It's really trying. Which is more than can be said from previous outings this week. We'll just, you know, we'll just stay up on top of this rock. We've got all these missiles and all these launchers. No reason not to just drop them on this guy right here. Cover be damned. You know what counters cover? Overwhelming explosions. When you can literally level the playing field to the bedrock with the volume of missiles that you are throwing. I can't take much more of this. That is the moment that you will know you have enough missiles. Awaiting orders. And why not? If the game is willing to give us focus, why not simply dump that focus on this target only a few hexes away and it deny it its cover, deny it its guarded state, deny it any chances of true survival in the face of 200 LRMs. The hits are still coming. I got a good feeling here. And somehow survives the salvo. Which means there's one more chance for this Atlas to throw up the white flag. And honestly, it probably should at this point. Although it's doing a good job of starting to lightly gray my armor. Reporting heavy damage. Commander. Let's just take a look at this guy. You know what? This guy's still got armor on his back. We should probably fix that. That seems reasonable. Target in the distance. Lining up the shot. Let's make it happen, shall we? And with that... The last of our Atlas targets comes to a rest under the weight of metric tons of explosions. I hope that that was as satisfying and cathartic to you as it was for me, because mm, that is real good explosions. 10 rounds, 11 minutes, and 16 seconds. In this, the Com completely unfair number of missiles fired. Now imagine for a moment down the line, down the down the inner sphere timeline, after the clans have shown up, and uh, a Bane with eight LRM-15s shows up. It's gonna look a little like that, and honestly, that's all right. The enemy forces, of course, to no surprise, obliterated. Good times. That makes me happy. Now, as I finish up this video, I'd just like to take a moment to let everyone know that with the upcoming holidays and accompanying family obligations, the pace of Battletech in the morning video releases is going to slow down just a little bit. I'm hoping to put up between one and three videos a week going forward, hopefully, until we've gotten clear of the holidays and well into the new year. Now, this of course assumes we still have beta access once the new year arrives. And if not, well, that means we're all waiting with bated breath for the imminent release of the Battletech PC game. Get hype, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost there. I'd also like to thank all of you out there for watching. When I started recording these videos, I didn't really do it having any sort of real audience in mind. 
aside from some friends. But your comments and kind words mean a lot to me, and I truly appreciate that I can bring some stompy robot silliness to all of your viewing monitors. Who's awesome? You're awesome. But that'll be all for today's Battletech in the morning. I am, as always, your humble Mech Commander, Captain Nips. I hope all of you out there have a wonderful morning, wonderful afternoon, evening, or night. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful, happy holidays. If you celebrate, and if you don't celebrate, just have some good days. That works too. Go out and find some happiness in your life. Enjoy, enjoy life. Have a good time. As for me, I'm off to enjoy life. So next, until next time, I'll see all of you in the next video.